My name is Demian Nunez, and I'm an MS student at the University of Maryland's Department of Entomology in the Hooks Lab. Cucurbit growers face a variety of challenges before they get their crops to market. Among these are a variety of insect pests, such as striped and spotted cucumber beetles, squash vine borers, and squash bugs. These pests can cause a number of varieties beyond just mechanical feeding damage, which, uh, including transmitting diseases such as mosaic viruses and bacterial wilt. Bacterial wilt is a very serious disease that causes vascular damage to plants and uh, left unmanaged it can cause uh, yield losses of up to 100%. To control these pests, growers often use chemical insecticides that they can apply either foliarly or systemically, but these come with a number of drawbacks. Among these are, uh, of course, damage to beneficial insect biodiversity, which can lead to uh, secondary pest outbreaks, as well as uh, pollinator decline and just the economic cost of applying these uh, pesticides. So for because of these problems there's a, a, a desire to look for alternatives that are less environmentally deleterious and economically costly. Recent work in the Hooks lab has shown some promise of using red clover intercropped with cucumber to augment beneficial arthropod abundance and suppress crop pests. The purpose of our ongoing study is to see if such results can be replicated in a cantaloupe system using two new intercrops, Alsai clover and a Virginia wild ryegrass. We are interested in seeing if there are different uh, differences in the level of benefit afforded by a clover or a bunch grass, and since they are both perennials, we are also interested in seeing if they can extend their benefit to successive years. Important predators such as ground beetles, wolf spiders, and some parasitoids have been known to overwinter in soil. Uh, among grass root systems. However, there is limited knowledge regarding whether this happens as much in clover. An overwintering population of beneficials would be great because it means that predator populations are already established before uh, pest populations can colonize the crops. To monitor how our treatments impact the abundance of beneficial arthropods and pests in the cantaloupe, we are deploying several monitoring methods in the cantaloupe fields. Pitfall traps are used to capture ground predators such as wolf spiders and ground beetles while yellow sticky cards are used to catch insects flying directly over the canopy, which could include parasitic wasps or tachinid flies, which prey on adult beetles. Weekly visual counts are used to get an idea of what is present on the foliage of the plants, and in spring emergence cages are deployed to get an idea of what arthropods are overwintering in the different crops. To see if any biocontrol benefits transfer over to the next year in the field season after we grow the cantaloupe, uh, we deploy emergence cages to intercept the arthropods as they come out for the spring and uh, rotate sorghum into the cantaloupe's place to be monitored for sugarcane aphid activity with foliar counts. Wolf spiders are of special interest to us. Recent research has shown that their presence alone can deter cucumber beetle feeding activity and reduce their residence time on the plants. When the beetles detect visual or chemical cues from the spiders, they will often stop feeding and fly away. Research has also shown that wolf spider abundance increases as habitat structure and the availability of alternate prey items increase. This is in contrast to simple monoculture, uh, conventional crop production where you have a very simple habitat and not a lot of alternate prey items for these important predators. Of course, a effective method of biocontrol is not very useful if it negatively impacts the yield of the crops that are being produced. Preliminary data from last year shows that uh, the weight of the cantaloupe produced can be reduced due to competition between the cantaloupe plants and the cover crops we are using. Uh, this year we are of course continuing the project and we are extending our evaluation to other market relevant characteristics such as color, uh, firmness, uh, titratable acidity, and soluble solid content. And we plan to continue this project through to next summer and by then once uh, all this is complete we should be able to come to more solid conclusions about the viability of these practices as a method of biocontrol and cantaloupe.